Okay. So, back in the day, this is about Pekerni. How does Mr. Pekerni's height compare with other AP stat students or stat students in general? In order to answer the question, 21 students were sampled from <laughs> Skyward. That's, that's old too, isn't it? Focus. <laughs> Their heights in inches were. Here they are. All right. So here's a dot plot of the distribution. What it says, add in a critical feature of the dot plot that would cost you a point. What's missing? 77's missing? Yeah, it is. We can add that, but that's not what I was thinking about. There's something else, too. <laughs> what else? Anything? Oh, there's 62. 62. Yeah. It's missing a 62? Yep. Yeah. Alright, what else? It's not about the data. I appreciate your, your eagle eye of details. There's still one detail. If you look big picture, what is it missing? No, we haven't done, no, not yet. But if I was just asking you to make a dot plot of the data and this is what you turned in, what would I have to take off points for? Well, there's one in 76, that's supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not what I was thinking about, but okay, <laughs> great. Hey, we're on it, we're on it. No? Nope. Nope. Still see it? Wow. Okay. We need a label for the x axis. <laughs> but you literally didn't say it out loud. So how would I know? <laughs> we need a label. So what would it be? It would be heights. In inches, so we want, always want to include a unit. <clears throat> All right, heights in inches. All right, now, now y'all are ready to go with this, I can tell. What's the median height? How would we find median? That's average, that's mean. Adding them up and dividing by total is the mean. That's not the median. Find the middle. So, what do I have to make sure of before I find the middle? But my raw set of data. What has to happen first before I can find the middle? It's too early, isn't it? Getting some blank stares. Your face says what I'm feeling. You have to make sure the data set, it's, it's in order from least to greatest. Right? It is, thank you, thank you so much. But you gotta always check that, right? It's not always that friendly. So now, to find median, what would we do? We would just... Cross 10 out on both sides. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I, I tend to do it this way because I don't always pay attention to the number. See, till we get to the middle, where do I fall? All right, 63? Okay, what's the median height? 63 inches. How did we find it? We list the data from least to greatest. Find the middle. Now what do you do if it's not an odd number and there's not a clear middle? Add, add the two middle ones and divide by two. Y'all remember that from middle school? Cool. Now, Q3. Q3 says that, what is Q3? Where, how would I find Q1 or Q3? Which one? Q3. Q3 is 75th percentile, yeah. Q1 is in the 25th percentile. So how do I find that? Anyone, anyone? 
Okay, so I'm gonna erase what we did here because I've, I've marked my median. I'm gonna erase my other markings because once you know the middle, in order to find Q1 and Q3, because the middle you can almost call Q2, right? It's the 50th percentile. So this is Q2, if you will. Now to find Q1, you're gonna find the middle of the lower half of data. Again, they're in order, least to greatest, so let's find the middle. Um, I'm gonna choose a different color. Don't count the, the 63, we don't count that one. So 62? All right, so Q1 is 62. And then in the same way, what's wrong, Bennett? What did I do? Uh, no, I said there's, there's four crossed out on the right side and five on the left side. Like Let's see, how many, how many data points are there? Oh, it should be because there's even, isn't there? Yeah, Good job, Bennett. Good job. All right, so I, count, I can't count. It's there in the morning. So it should end up in, with a middle two, shouldn't it? Okay, there you go. So 61 and 62 are my middle two pieces of data. What's up? Mm -mm. Yeah, that's one little detail that you may not remember. Q, Q2 is now 63. Everything below 63, or that 63, I should say, is what you're using for Q1. And everything above it is what we'll use to find Q3, right? Okay, so then Q1 would be what? 61 and a half. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the top half of the data. So now we have an even number. I'm going to have to average those two values. So what do you get when you average 65 and 68? 66 and a half. 66 and a half. All right, so there's Q3. Yes, you have calculators. You don't have to do that in your head. All right. Where is Q1, where is Q3, how did we find them? Okay, so Q1 is 61 and a half. So it's the midpoint of the lower half of the data. Q3 we found to be 66 and a half, and that's the midpoint of the higher half of the data. Easy enough so far. Now it says record the following values and then use them to make a dot plot. So minimum, what is, minimum is the smallest number, right? So what's the minimum? 57. Q1 we said was 61 and a half. Median was 63. Q3 was 66 and a half. And then max is 77. All right, now it says make a dot plot with that. Now, when you make a dot plot, that's the one that you may have learned, not a dot plot, a box plot, I can read. Box plot is the one with the box and the whiskers on it. Did y'all do those in middle school? Maybe, remember them, maybe? It's been so, it's so been long ago, right? So can you put in your head a little box in there? And there's a box with the whiskers hanging out, right? In that box, there's also a vertical line. So that's where we start our box. In the vertical line is the median. So I started the median, which was at 63. So I'm going to do that. 61 and a half falls right there. And then Q3 is at 66 and a half. And those three lines make up our box. There's our box. So when you look at a box plot, you're going to see a box, but you're also going to see a vertical line. That line is Q2 or median. Then your whiskers are going to go out to your maxes and your minimums, okay? So our maximum is way out here. And this one is down here. It's, not, it's, it's off the chart, right? 57. It's a very stretched out distribution, if you will. Now, it, this may or may not be correct because we have not calculated for outliers, so we're going to check it. 
And normally you would do this first because I know how you feel about erasing, but we're going to be fine. Now, interquartile range, range, also known as the IQR, is just the Q3 value minus the Q1 value. So where do you see Q, IQR in the box plot? Where is that depicted? What part of the box plot is made up of Q1 and Q3? Q3. Somebody said it. Heard it. Huh? The box. The, box. <laughs> the whole box is Q1 and Q3, right? This is Q1. This is Q3, right? That is the interquartile range. So let's figure this out. Q3 minus Q1. Now numerically, we would do 66 and a half minus 61 and a half, which gives you what, five? Okay, so the interquartile range is five. Now, an outlier is a data value that is way too small or way too big. What does that even mean? Well, mathematically, way too small looks like this. If it's less than the Q1 value minus one and a half IQRs. All right, so let's figure that out. So notice in both equations here, we have to have one and a half IQRs. So let's figure that part out really quick. So 1.5 times five, right, gives me seven and a half. So now to determine if there is an outlier, I take a low outlier, I take Q1. Q1 was what, 61 and a half minus seven and a half. Gives me what, 54? Yeah, 54. Okay, so then I look at my data set. Do I have any data points that are lower than 54? No. no. <laughs> so there's no data. lower than 54, so that means there's no low outliers. So what this is doing is creating a, or an invisible fence. It's like creating a little fence out here where, where the, if I extended my graph, it would be 54. And if any data points fell outside that, it would be an outlier, okay? So now what determines if it's way too big? Well, you take the Q3, the high end of the box, which was 66 and a half, and we add the seven and a half. So that'd be 74. So 74, there's a little fence right there, rut row. That means that 77 is greater than 74, right? That means that 77 is an outlier. Okay, so how does that change my graph? Well, that means my whisker really doesn't go all the way out to 77. Okay, we'll come back and do that. But at 77, it gets its own special place. It gets a little star, or you can make it just a separate dot. But that data point is far outside the range. So then my whisker on the high end needs to go to the next highest value. What's the next highest value? 72, good. So now my whisk score just ends here at 72. Can we live with that? Yeah. I mean, it's a little tedious, but none of the math is hard. Okay. So, suppose Bikerni is 63 inches tall. I don't really know what his height is. How does his height compare with the rest of the students? He is the median, so it's a form of an average, right? Yeah. So we would say something like, since 63 is the median value, so what does that mean? That means 50% of the students are shorter than him. And 50% are taller. That's what median means.
Okie dokie. Can I turn the page? Okay, so let's look at this. Here's what you need to remember from this section. How to find outliers, okay? We said outlier was what? Q3 minus Q1. And the one and a half IQR rule says this. To find lower outliers, what do we do? It has to be less than... Uh, Q1. One and a half IQRs, or Q1, yeah. Q1 minus 1.5 IQRs. Maybe I'll write that better. And then to find a higher outlier? Good. Plus one and a half IQRs. Good. See a pattern here? Okay, so there's your box plot with everything labeled lovely for you, right? Median, quartile one, quartile three. Maximum, minimum. Notice that the maximum is really in this dot plot, or this box plot is really an outlier, isn't it? So that whisker had to bump down because there's apparently an, an invisible line somewhere in here, right? Okay, so then let's think. If these are quartiles, what percent of the data is, between, is in each little section? 25, right? Good, 25%. And the IQR is the middle 50% of the data, which you can see with the box. That's all you need to know. Okay? We handle that? What do you mean? The thing on the left. 1.5 IQR rules. Well, this, these are the IQR rules. There's two of them because there's a low fence. We call it a low fence and a high fence. So there's two. We good? So if I gave you a set of data, you could find the box plot? You could find outliers? Yes? With that help? With that little help from your friends? Okay, so tomorrow we're going to do another simulation on.